Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moldy Worm Gaming Channel. My name is Moldy Worm 41975 and today we are continuing our Lake Coved mini series inside our main SnowRunner Let's Play series. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes then I will link the SnowRunner playlist that I've made down in the description. It has all the SnowRunner episodes I've made so far including all the Lake Coved mini series episodes. This is going to be part five, and uh, hopefully, soon we're going to be getting a new update. So, this is going to be the last Lake Coved uh, bit of gameplay for a little while. As soon as a new uh, update comes out, then we probably will be returning. Uh, but this is going to be the last episode just for a little while. I'm not getting rid of the SnowRunner Let's Play series, it's just going to be the last um, episode for a while on Lake Coved. But anyway, with that out of the way, today I've got an awesome video. In the last episode, we went and rescued the brand new Ford F750 pickup. It's an absolutely awesome looking thing. And today we're going to go and test it out. We're going to see what the Ford can do, how good it is off-road. And um, we've got a brand new mission to go and complete as well. Okay, so here on the map, you can see, um, if I just go over to the contracts page... We've completed all of these missions and we've completed all of these missions except for this one here. Um, it's called the Sites of Military Glory uh, contract. It's the last contract that I actually have to do in Lake Coved. Um, I've still got a lot of objectives to go and complete so I've got plenty of gameplay still um, to go and complete on Lake Coved, but this is the last contract mission that I have and so I thought today Rather than going and doing it off camera like I have been doing with the other contract missions I thought we'll go and do this one on camera and we'll use the F750 So we've visited a couple of the bunkers in the let's play series um, I think we've actually seen all of the bunkers now um, in the Lake Cov series, uh, but today we're actually going to go and visit them all three in one video, and we're going to see if we can complete this um, mission as well. So that is the mission today, but first let's go ahead and customize the brand new Ford. Okay, so here is the Ford we went and rescued in the last episode. Uh, we went and rescued it with the Arteon. That was an absolutely awesome vehicle. Um, it managed to pull the F750 all the way to the North Camp. Uh, but today we're going to be driving the F750. So let's go ahead and customize the thing. Now, as usual, I've gone in and got all the most important upgrades so we can fully off road spec this thing. Um, first of all, we have some different engines. Now, I don't know if this is a um, whether this is a bug at the moment or whether these are the actual stats of the Ford, uh, but you can see power to weight is C class, durability is B minus, and fuel consumption is S. So it's not the best vehicle uh, performance wise. Uh, you can put the five liter V6 in, um, which does increase the durability to B. Um, but it doesn't actually increase any of the stats. So I don't know whether that's a bug. Some people in the community are feeling like that is a bug. So possibly it is. We'll have to wait till the next update to see whether it fixes that or not. But if these are the actual stats, they're not great, if I'm honest. Uh, so we're going to just go with the 4 liter V6. We're just going to leave that in there. The gearbox we can't change, so we'll leave that one in there. The suspension, we have two options. We have the raised suspension, and we have the tuned custom, which is basically just a higher lift kit. Um, I went and got the tuned custom one because that's the higher lift kit, and I figured there's no point raising it if we're not going to raise it to the full height. So we'll put that on there. Now, tyres, I'm not really sure about tires what sort of um tires we want on this thing i'm feeling like we want off-road tires um we can't actually get any of the mud tires which is kind of a shame um i also don't know whether we should go for chain tires today um i mean they've got good ice performance but are we going to be on the ice we, pr we probably will drive across the lake 
So I think yeah, we'll go for chain tires today. We've we've not used the chain tires that much, so we will give that a go. I'm gonna stick the autonomous scout on because I feel like we might roll. We did roll in the last episode, so you never know. Um, frame add-ons. We have the pickup bed, which you can actually remove. Um, so that is what it looks like removed uh, now I believe if you buy this from the store it doesn't come with a pickup bed because I've rescued this it does come with a pickup bed um, so we're going to put the pickup bed on there um, you can have the custom pickup bed which adds a load of extra fuel some spare tyres more spare parts and obviously the most noticeable thing is this massive roll bar sort of roll cage thing that goes around the outside looks really cool i like it so we'll put that on there you can get the small roof rack as well which continues that and it adds more fuel a spare tire um, it adds those beacons on as well um, so we'll go put that on the thing the utility mount um, I believe is that spare tire thing there um, that came with the pickup because I rescued it but it doesn't usually um, so we'll leave that on there you can actually have a flatbed if you wanted to or you can have a loading crane but because we're going for like a long range thing today we're going to use as much fuel as possible we're going to need as much um, extra parts as we can get um, whoops that wasn't what I meant to do if we go to all-wheel drive we can have engageable all-wheel drive you can see down there that is something you have to go and discover on the map which I have done the snorkel which is just up there by the window you can have the tall front facing or the short round cap I'm gonna go for the tall front facing I think that looks pretty cool on the exhaust now we can get some awesome exhausts on this we can get the outrolled um exhaust which are basically like those stacks right there you can get the flat cap stacks which i don't know if they're on both sides or just on one side um i can't there's a little bit of lag today for some reason um or you can have the stock which i believe is just down there at the bottom it's just like a little one out of the bottom i like the outrolled um exhaust so we're going to go for those in miscellaneous you can have the round beacon but that does remove your um your roll cage thing so we're not going to go for that you can get pro chrome parking lights which you can see are just up under there they're not really that visible so i don't see any point in that you can get the factory parking beacons but again you can't really see them so there's not much point um, you can have external horns or external horns um, I think that's uh, oh so the stock ones are on the roof and those ones are on the mud guards there on the fender um, and you can have a sun visor which I actually think looks pretty cool so we'll go for that one then on the roof you can have the flasher bar which is kind of like a police uh, light bar you can have roof fog lights or you can have roof fog lights uh, i think the naming here might they, they might have just messed up a little bit with the naming um but anyway um but that does remove your roof rack so we're not going to go for that the roof um the roof thing there does have some fog lights on you can see those two square ones there so i'm happy with that on the front bumper you can have the lattice front bumper you can have the hunter front bumper which basically completes the roll bar look um of the vehicle and it has those like two um i don't know what you'd call them like the two string bits going up the bonnet there um you can have the trapezium or you can have the stock um i think i don't really like the look of the hunter but to complete the look of the rest of the vehicle i think we've got to go for it so we'll throw that on there the rims oh we can't actually change the rims that's kind of unfortunate but um anyway so then in the paint section we have this white and blue um sort of two-tone uh, just a like classic two-tone looks really really nice there 
Then we can get an inverted version of that, which uh, basically just flips the blue and the white around. Uh, but that does look really nice. I do like that. Um, we can get the sort of turquoise and green, uh, but the uh, sun visor does stay white. It's just something to note right there. You can have orange and brown, which uh, not a big fan of that. You can have the red and white, which actually does look pretty cool. I do like that. And for some reason, you can get purple and green. Um, I've seen quite a few um, a few people using this one. I'm not going to go for it. I think it looks absolutely horrible. But if you're into that kind of thing, you can get the purple and green. But today, I think I'm going to go with the red and white. That actually does look really nice. Um, it's just nice and clean, classic look. And I like the sort of rustiness of the red. I think it matches the build that we've gone for. And there we have it. That is the thing fully customised. It looks absolutely incredible. It looks completely different to uh, what it did a couple of minutes ago. Um, so I'm going to go and plan out a route now uh, for us to take to each bunker and we're going to see if we can get all three. Okay, so we're outside in the F750 for the first time. I've planned out a little route to the first bunker which is actually just behind that hill. Um, it's actually a pretty cool vehicle. Um, the, the gearbox we can't actually change as you saw. Um, but it does have the snow running gearbox in it already. You can see that it has low plus and low minus and it has the high range uh, which is sort of typical of the, the snow running gearbox. So that is actually quite cool although it's you know obviously you can't change the gearbox uh, the snow running gearbox is pretty cool um, and it's definitely very useful for Lake Covd. Um, the the chain tyres we have on here are actually working pretty nicely. Um, they are quite useful. I think that was a good choice for today. Um, we're going to be driving on the lake at certain points in here, so I feel like that's going to be quite useful. Uh, the, uh, the vehicle does have all-wheel drive. And, well, it does now. Um, that is an upgrade that you can go and get. And it does have diff lock as standard. It has um, permanent diff locks, so that is all good. Um, we are struggling a little bit up here. This is where I feel like the um, the F750 might struggle a little bit is with like slopes and stuff. Um, am I actually going the right way? I okay, so yeah, I'm not going the right way. That's why we are struggling a little bit. Uh, let me just go and. Um, let me just go and map this out again. I didn't put too many points because I didn't really think it was necessary, but apparently I have driven up the wrong part. All right, okay, this is where we need to turn up, and it is actually sheet ice. You can see here, that's absolutely terrible. Um, but luckily, we did go for the uh, chained tires, so I think that was a pretty good call, to be honest, because we would never have made it up here. There's no winch points, as you can see. So the only way you get up here is to have chain tyres. So I think that was a pretty good shout, actually. Um, but yeah, what do I think of the Ford? Well, it is quite underpowered. I will say that it is very, very underpowered. If you're going to use this thing... Um, I definitely sort of recommend you take some friends with you because you're probably going to get stuck quite a lot. You can see there I was just trying to climb that slope and any other truck wouldn't struggle with that. Um, but the Ford did a little bit. So the power is kind of a shame. I wish it did have a bit more power. You can see like here it is struggling a little bit. Um, but fuel consumption wise it is in the single digits which is always good to see if you've got a truck in single digits then you you've got a pretty good truck um, the fuel though is absolutely incredible because you get 140 liters standard and you get um, well I don't know you get a shit ton of extra uh, frame add-on fuel with this thing so that is always really nice um, we are struggling a little bit just to get through this passage. 
Right, I've got through that section. It wasn't the nicest, um, but we have now done that. And we have actually reached our first military bunker. Um, it is quite near the garage, so not too difficult to discover. Um, there is like a little box that we've got to go and drive in over there. Now, something that I will mention about the Ford as well is it has six gears, which is awesome. Um, but the only problem with that is it struggles a little bit um, with its power. So you can see I'm in third here and obviously it's on the thick snow and it is really struggling to continue going forward. Now, you can obviously tap the uh, the left trigger and it will you know jump back down into first you can see that's what I'm doing right there but it will keep putting itself back in third gear because it's an automatic gearbox so it will keep struggling so that's a little bit annoying every every time it goes into third you've got to change down which is kind of a pain in the ass but anyway um, I am enjoying the Ford I think it's an awesome addition to the game we have discovered our first bunker which is absolutely incredible we've got two left which are both in the north so let's continue and see if we can go and get those so what I just mentioned about it sort of getting stuck in third it does do that a little bit but um, I have discovered it likes to drive around in high range so I've got it in high range at the moment and it does seem to be it seems to be um, doing a lot better with that uh, now every now and then you will see the like thing that pops up on the screen that tells you the engine is stalling when you're in high range all you got to do with that is just stick it back in automatic for like five minutes and then you can go back to high range it sort of um, it uses the high range up a little bit uh, you'll see it yeah there we go it's popped up you just stick it back in automatic and it will go away and then you can go ahead and stick it back in high range no not quite <laughs> getting a little bit ahead of myself um, it doesn't like going up hills in high range so when you're traveling on the flat when you're traveling like across a lake or something like that you can stick it in high range like here I can go for high range and it's absolutely fine when you start going up a steep slope then you'll have to put it back in automatic we're just approaching the frozen lake now now we have crossed here a couple of times in previous episodes and it's not been too bad um, I have mentioned that the fatter tires you have on the vehicle the less pressure it will put on the ice and the less likely you to go through and um, something like we were driving the Yar in, a, in a episode 2 that has really fat tyres on it and um, that didn't fall through the ice here but in the first episode when we were actually driving the APC we did fall through the ice and this thing has quite thin wheels it has the dual tyres on the rear but on the front it does have quite thin wheels so I'm going to take it steady here. I don't know whether we're going to fall through or not. Um, I'm just going to take it slow. Yeah, I think we might struggle a little bit just to go straight across. Um, sometimes a bit of speed can help you. If you just boot it, you will go through, but you won't like get stuck. Um, I don't think this Ford has enough speed to do that. So I'm going to take the cautious route. If you go around here... Um, this route that I'm taking is actually quite nice and you can just avoid that little section um, I've seen quite a few people fall through the ice there it's not the nicest bit of map um, but you can just drive around it so yeah if you're playing Lake Cod for the first time if you're taking this route then just follow the route I just took there and you should be all okay so at this point I can kind of give you my verdict, can I recommend the Ford F750 to you? Well, I like the vehicle a lot, the fuel consumption is incredible on this, it's um, it's only, well it's under 5 litres a minute, um, which is really really good and obviously it has loads of fuel capacity, especially with this massive frame add-on. So that is really cool, I like the look of the vehicle. 
I like um, that can tow a trailer, that's really useful. It obviously works really well in the snow. The only thing that lets it down, which I didn't think was going to be too much of an issue, but it is quite bad, is the, um, the lack of power. Um, if this thing had a bit more power, it could be a really, really cool vehicle. And it is a really cool vehicle, it just has that lack of... Um, lack of power which really does let it down a little bit um, but apart from that it is a really cool vehicle if you're starting out the game then it is quite good um, I didn't really mean to do that it probably wasn't the best idea by me um, we do need to cross here somewhere um, we have crossed this section in the past but I can't actually remember whereabouts we crossed um, let me give that another try. Okay, that's a little bit harder. Um, hmm. That might not have been a great idea. I think we might be stuck now. Um, this is where the lack of power comes in. Um, stick it in low plus. Let's go for low minus. See, now, I have discovered the lack of power isn't too much of an issue with the low range gearbox. If you stick it in low plus or low minus, you can see it is moving there. It is then, well, I think that's actually made it worse. But um, if you stick it in low plus or low minus, that can occasionally give you a little hand. So, the lack of power is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it isn't as bad as you'd think. Uh, so can I recommend this thing to you? If you are trying to do well in Lake Covd, then no. Um, but if you are just starting out the game, it is a cool vehicle. Um, if you're traveling with friends as well, then obviously they, you can get them to help you out. Um, so yeah, it's quite cool if you're starting out the game. If you're a sort of higher level player like myself, I wouldn't really recommend it. As cool as it is, it's not very practical and we are completely beached here so I'm gonna go and get something just to pull me out now okay we have finally got off that horrible frozen lake um, I did have to just use the APC to give me a little hand uh, we were completely stuck there was no way I was getting out with the Ford the APC pulled us out is that a downside for the Ford I guess it is um, but we're going to continue anyway in the Ford because that is our mission for today, basically. Uh, can the Ford actually reach all these military points? And I feel like it can. Alright, okay, so here is our second military bunker. We have visited this one in a previous episode, um, but we're going to go and visit it again. Um, I'm going to stick it in low plus for this because it's quite thick snow. I don't know how the Ford's going to handle this. Hopefully we can at least reach the um, like checkpoint thing, uh, which is just there. Um, it seems to be okay like with the thicker snow and stuff. It just seems to struggle with uphill a little bit um, and like climbing over big rocks and things. With like thick snow like this, it seems to be okay. Um, I don't want to speak too soon, but it doesn't doesn't seem to be too bad with that. But there we go. We have discovered our second bunker, which looks absolutely awesome. I don't know whether these bunkers are like still used or, or whether they're like supposed to be abandoned bunkers. But they look really cool. They've got like the massive anti-aircraft guns up there. Um, they're all in like really cool locations as well. So we've got one bunker left to go and discover, which is not that far away, it's just right here, and we have visited this one in a previous episode as well. Um, I think the best thing to do is just follow this frozen lake bed up here. I have driven that off camera before, and it isn't too bad. I feel like the Ford should be able to make that. Right, we've been driving up this uh, like frozen lake bed. Um, as I predicted, it's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. The Ford seems to be um, okay with like ice and thick snow. Um, as I mentioned, where it struggles is with uphill bits. So, it's been okay with that. We have got a steep uphill bit just here. 
Um, the bunker is just there to my left, and that is actually our final sort of destination. That is the last bunker that we have to go and discover. So as long as the Ford can make it up this hill, which it is struggling with just a little bit, I've got it in low plus. Um, it has actually made it up the worst of that. Come on, Ford, don't get stuck there. That's it. We'll just go for low range. And that's where it's all at in SnowRunner. You've got to use the low range now and then. You've got to know how and when to use the uh, different sort of gearbox modes. Uh, now, another bit where it struggles is rock crawling, like here. And this is the real issue with the Ford, is because it is so long, it does high center quite a bit. But it has got through that, which is quite impressive. Um, I also don't know where we need to go. Um, we need to just go to there. That is our next. That is our next location. It's right in the middle of this like thick snow. We literally just need to get our bumper there, and we should be good. And there we are abandoned bunkers visited so they are abandoned bunkers um, it says um, it's hard to say how significant these fortifications contributed to the cause um, I will no longer bore you I hope you enjoyed this very brief tour so that's a nice little um, it's a nice little mission to explore a bit of the map I like that they've put these military bunkers in. It adds something unique to the map that we've not seen before. Um, that is going to do it for today's video though, guys. Um, definitely, the Ford F750 is an awesome vehicle. I'd go and recommend you pick this thing up. Um, it does have a few downsides, as I've mentioned in this video, um, but I do really like the look of this thing. It looks incredible. It's got some awesome customization. So they are all good points to the vehicle. It did achieve the goal of visiting all three of the bunkers, which I honestly wasn't sure if it was going to. It did get stuck in the ice, but honestly, any of the vehicles could get stuck in the ice. So I'm not really counting that as um, a downside to the Ford. But that is going to do it for the video. I hope you have all enjoyed. If you have enjoyed, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe if you are new, and leave a comment. Let me know what you think of the brand new F750. But that is going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.